بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن وله ما بعد. I know the weather outside is not to our advantage, but those that are here, inshallah, we can give a short khatir, inshallah. Uh, inshallah, there will be some benefit. Um, this is not really a prepared one, so let's hope, inshallah, it makes sense. I was just thinking about, I was reciting Surah Hud, and I came across uh, the story of Nuh alayhi uh, salam. And I was just contemplating over one particular verse. When the Prophet Nuh alayhi salam tells his people that he has been sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah says, قَالَ الْمَلَأُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ قَوْمِهِ The elite of those who rejected him. The elite of those who kafaru min qawmihi. They gave two main reasons of why they rejected the risala of the Prophet Nuh alayhi salam. These reasons, they permeate throughout all of history and they are relevant to us today. Number one, they said, مَا نَرَاكَ إِلَّا بَشَرًا مِثْلَنَا You are just a human like us. You are a human, you're flesh and blood. You're not supernatural, you're not divine, you're not an angel. And number two, which is the point of today's khatira. وَمَا نَرَاكَ اتَّبَعَكَ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ هُمْ أَرَاذِلُنَا بَادِيَ الرَّأِي And we see the people who follow you are the lowest amongst us. They are the arathil. They are the scum. They are the socio-economically underprivileged. They're the underclass in terms of wealth, in terms of power, in terms of education. They are nobody. قَالَ الْمَلَى The elite said, your followers are peasants. Your followers are people who are not to our level. Badi al-ra'i. This has two meanings. Number one, badi al-ra'i means that it is obvious that they are at a different level than us. Number two, it means, this, uh, the, the eye is very profound. Number second interpretation is, they do not have intelligence. So they followed you without thinking through the real message. Their ra'i, their Intellect is very superficial. That's why they're following you. We don't think you guys are better than us. We're better than you. Therefore, you guys are liars. Now, today's brief khatira, I wanted to concentrate on the second aspect. So they said, number one, you're a human being. Number two, your followers are low class. So why should we follow you? We are better than you. You must be liars. Subhanallah, this same concept and message lasts to this day. One of the main reasons why people outside of our faith consider our faith to be false, there are many reasons, but one of them, look at you guys, you're backward. Your GDP, where is it? Your Nobel Prize winners, your scientific achievements, you are all third world civilization, right? This is exactly aradiluna, badi ra'i. the same mentality is there. And subhanAllah, this type of criticism was even more pronounced 150 years ago during the peak era of colonization. When non-Muslims literally controlled 85% of Muslim lands. They had North Africa, as you know, Algeria completely under you know, uh, French control. India, of course, completely under British control. Uh, the Dutch controlled many areas, Mal Malaysia, Indonesia, they controlled that region. And of course, even Egypt was indirectly controlled by the British. After World War I, you know, the Ottoman Empire collapsed and literally the Ummah was carved up and handed over. You know, the, the British got this, the French got this, literally. So this notion of how can you be correct? We're better than you. We're more powerful than you, right? Literally, the Mala said you are the aradil the same concept and subhanallah a bit of a tangent here one of the people who responded in a different way and there's nothing wrong with this but i also want to point out one of the points of the khatira there's th what i'm going to say is not wrong but it is not the strongest defense around 1870 1880 this notion began to be used to defend the ummah it was first elaborated by a very enigmatic figure by the name of jamal al-din al-afghani very interesting figure i'm neither praising nor criticizing i'm being factual here jamal al-din al-afghani was an intellectual thinker one of the first to try to defend in a different manner jamal al-din al-afghani in a very public letter in the french newspaper with ernest renan one of the main orientalists of france afghani was living in paris at the time he wrote a public letter in the newspaper defending the charge that Islam was backward. Because Renan basically said, look at these people, they are backward, they don't have any civilization, they don't have any culture. You know, we, we deserve to colonize them. That was his point. And Jamal al-Din al-Afghani wrote 
a letter which was the basis of an entire trend that all of you are familiar with and all of us have been swept by that trend. Very interesting trend. What is that trend? He said, actually, your Western civilization owes everything to us. He flipped the script as we say in English, right? He literally did a 180. You guys are proud at who you are. Go read your own history. You wouldn't be where you are without us. We gave you the science, the technology, the heritage. We preserved the legacy of Aristotle and Plato. We handed you optics and chemistry and algebra. Every one of you and myself in this audience, we are very familiar with this rhetoric, right? But you have to realize 150 years ago it was unknown. Literally, the ummah did not know how to respond. So Jamaluddin al-Afghani began this trend that we are now, every one of us, to this day we have khutbahs about this. He is actually the main catalyst. And in fact, especially the last generation, 60s, 70s, especially 1970s, so much research was done that actually proved this point. And we are well aware, Ibn al-Haytham and Ibn Rushd and you know, al-Khawarizmi and all of these types of, we all hear their names, right? So this is a type of flipping of the script. Now, I'm going to be politically incorrect as I usually am. And I will say, there's nothing wrong. There's elements of truth. But two points, much can be said, time is always limited. Two points. Number one, it might be true that indeed for 600 years, 700 years, the Muslim world led science and technology. I mean, there's, this is an undeniable fact. And it might be true that we sparked the Renaissance and maybe even the Reformation. But in the end of the day, this is the way of history and intellectual ideas. We took what the Greek had, we built on it. We handed it over to Europe, they built on it. And they went to the moon and back. They took our knowledge, let's be honest here. Again, we have to be a bit more critical rather than superficial. They took what we gave them and they built on it to where we are today. So indeed, it is true that we did a little bit, no doubt about that. But in the end of the day, we stopped doing what we were doing. They took over and they took it to a whole different level. This is one point. Another point can be said here, actually many points can be said, that in fact, and this is my main point of the whole khatira, this tactic might be semi-valid, it's not wrong, but it is not also the most correct or the best tactic. Why? Because in the end of the day, our strength what we call our trump card, no pun intended. Our strength is not in Ibn al-Haytham and al-Khawarizmi and Ibn Rushd and al-Razi. That's not our strength. No. This is not where we will win the debate. Our strength is in what Allah blessed us with a knowledge of who we are, why we're here, a knowledge of heaven and hell, a knowledge of morality, i.e. Iman. This is where we will always be better than them. I wish we could measure not GDP, but akhlaq. I wish we could measure respect to elders. I wish we could measure compassion to society. I wish we could measure thinking about why you're here, nobility of purpose, hisab on the day of judgment. There is no question that our ummah would win every single ummah hands down. There's no question about humanity and feeding the hungry and generosity. And by the way, whatever studies exist, we know that the ummah is the most generous and the ummah takes care of its elders. We know from these studies. But this is the real character win. It's not in scientific achievements. It's not in Nobel Prize winning. No, the real win is who created you? What are you doing here? What's your purpose in life? What's going to happen after death? If you know the answers to these questions, then you are better than the one who can go to the moon and back, and yet he's going to bow in front of a cow and think the cow created him. See, this is where we have to understand that what we have, our strength, what we prove, the truth, is not our scientific achievements of the 8th century. That's interesting. We might give our kids a bit of a boost. No problem. As I said, it's not wrong but it's also not the right or the best response. So how did the Prophet Nuh respond? We go back to the verse. See, the, the Mala said, look at you people, you are the worst amongst us. You are superficial in your intelligence. Badi your, 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 your opinion is very low class, right? How did Nuh respond? Qala ya qawmi, ara'aytum, my people, let me ask you that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us rahmatan min indihi, 
if he gave us a mercy فَعُمِّيَتْ عَلَيْكُمْ And you were blind to the blessing Allah gave us. You think we're superficial. You think we're low class. In reality, Allah has given us a blessing. And you are blind to this blessing. Can we force you to accept this blessing when you don't want to accept it? SubhanAllah, look at how Nuh alayhi salam responded. He did not go down the route of, oh, actually we are more powerful than you. They weren't. We have more wealth than you. They weren't. Nuh alayhi salam said, Ya qawmi, ara'aytum, in kan, in, in kutu ala bayna rabbi, if Allah has given me a bayyina, a clear evidence, wa atani rahmatan min indihi, and Allah has given me a rahma, a blessing, fa'ummiyat alaykum, you are blind to that blessing. Look, he twisted it around. He goes, you guys cannot even judge who is better. You're judging based upon GDP, based upon scientific achievement, based upon Nobel Prize winner. You are blind to the reality of what makes a civilization great. فَعُمِّيَتْ عَلَيْكُمْ أَنُلْزِمُكُمُوهَا Can we force you to accept this blessing? وَأَنْتُمْ لَهَا كَارِهُونَ And you don't even want to accept this blessing. So, and then the verses go on as well. Uh, Nuh alayhi salam says, I'm not saying I'm an angel. I'm not saying anni malak. I'm not saying I know ilm al ghayb. In fact, I'm not even asking you money. I am a human being. Then Nuh praises his own people that if you think my people are the lower class, right? Who am I to prevent Allah's mercy from coming to them? Allah will give them mercy. Allah will give them rahmah. That is the real prize. And you think you are better. In reality, Allah's rahmah is better. So, Bottom line, and that was the point of today's khatira. The tactic of Nuh alayhi salam, we need to absorb it as well. Our main strength does not lie in the physical greatness of this dunya. That's not how we prove the truth of our religion. Our main strength lies in the blessings Allah has given us. That blessing through the Quran, through Iman, through knowing why we are here, through recognizing the purpose of life. This is infinitely more important than to know how to get to the moon and come back from the moon. And that is a blessing. I have a rahma from Allah you do not have and you are blind to that rahmah. This is how we need to tell the people around us, maybe in a softer language, but this is the point here, that guys, what we have is something far better and more important, and that is a knowledge that Allah has given us of who created us, and what is the purpose of life, and what is the meaning of existence. That knowledge is what makes us better. And if you want it, alhamdulillah, it is yours. If you don't want it, then you are blind to this blessing. فَعُمِّيَتْ alaykum, And the fault is not ours. أَنُلْزِمُ kumuha. By the way, a little tidbit here. أَنُلْزِمُ kumuha is the longest word in the Qur'an. Ten letters. Right? It is the longest continuous uh, word in the Quran. Shall we force you to believe? That is literally one word. Anul zimu kumuha. Count the letters. It's ten letters. This is the longest continuous length of, of you know one uh, a word in the Quran. This is the beauty of Arabic. Literally, you make a ten letter word which translates as a small paragraph. Shall we force you, or do we have to force you to believe, or can we force you to believe? That's what it means. Anul zimu kumuha wa antum laha karihun. May Allah subhanahu wa taala allow us. The the confidence to be Muslim. May Allah save us from inferiority complex because that's what it is. It's inferiority complex. May Allah give us the izzah through Islam and that is the only way we're going to achieve izzah. And inshallah we'll continue uh, next week. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.